congratulations on the purchase of your new Ibex travel trailer. My name is Kelly Tussing. I'm with RV Wholesalers. Today I'm going to show you how to use your new RV during your first trip. All right, so first things first, after you get it unhitched from your tow vehicle, which we'll touch base on another video on hitching and unhitching, um, but the first thing you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna level the coach. So front to back, side to side. There's a couple ways with your tongue jack here. Um, you're gonna have power when you're plugged into your tow vehicle with the seven pin plug. So you have that option for you. Um, you also have a battery disconnect here, which will connect the 12 volt power. So I'll go ahead and turn that on for now. Also, you can use your 30 amp plug to shoreline if you're already plugged in as well. So the first thing here we're gonna wanna do, raise it up or down with the tongue jack, that's gonna level it front to back, okay? And then I'll show you on the side here a level to kinda of tell right inside the entry door whether you're level front to back. And then from side to side, you're gonna actually pull over either leveling blocks or boards underneath of the tires, okay? So your jacks on the corners, which we'll show you here in a minute, are not for leveling the coach, they're more for stabilizing the unit. So we'll get to that, but let's go check it out and see if we're level here from front to back. All right, so just a little tip here, you're gonna to wanna to make sure when you open up the door, leave your steps in, and when you grab your level, you can use any traditional level. Just make sure it's actually on the floor not on this threshold. So you can see we're a little bit high here. So the next thing we're gonna to wanna to do is go back to the front jack and adjust that to lower down the front end to make sure we're within the, the parameters. All right, so back up here with the front jack. So we need to lower it down a little bit here. Um, but also I wanted to mention as well, every power jack will come with a manual override. So if you're out boondocking and your battery dies, you can pop this little rubber grommet here, just drop this down in and run this crank up and down. So you can still hitch and unhitch if you do lose power. Um, but we need to lower this down a fuzz. So we'll lower this down, then we'll go back and check our level again. All right, now that we have the unit level front to back, side to side, the next step is you're gonna to wanna to lower down your stabilizer jacks. There's one on each corner. Um, so you're gonna repeat this process three times. Um, also, I recommend using like some stackers or you can use a piece of wood, what have you. You're gonna put that right underneath the pad of the jack and you're gonna take your um, jack rod, which will come with every unit, and you're just gonna lower this down here goes nice and easy. Now these are just uh, stabilizing jacks just to keep the coach from rocking back and forth when you're in the unit. They're not for changing tires or leveling the unit, just strictly for stabilizing. So you're gonna lower this down all the way. And then what I usually do is, is once it's actually hitting, just go just a little bit to firm it up. And you'll kind of do that on each corner and just make sure everything is snug. And then that's just gonna keep it nice and sturdy as you're going through the unit. Um, also, while we're down here, I'm going to show you this unit is a 30 amp service unit. So if you have access to shore power, what you're going to want to do is there's a little notch on the one side and you'll see that right on the female end as well. So you're just going to push this in here, give a little turn, and then there's, it has a little lock nut here. You're just going to thread that on clockwise and then you'll plug it into your power source. All right, now that we have the unit leveled, we're gonna come up here to the front and I'm gonna show you, cause the next thing you're gonna wanna do is turn your propane bottle on, but I also wanted to show you how to install one. So if you have to get one filled up, you're just gonna bring it up here, you're gonna lower it down. And then it's just gonna be just like your barbecue at home. You're just gonna take this and you're gonna thread it on here all the way clockwise. And then you're gonna to wanna to open this bottle up so it's all the way wide open, okay? Now, one thing I'll also mention as well is the cover on the top has a quick entry. You can just loosen this and this will open up. Then you can actually open and close that as you're using it. And that'll just drop down here as well. And then we'll, next thing we'll do is we'll go around here to the side. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna move on to the water system. So you have a couple different options here as far as water hookup. The first one I'm gonna go over with you is the fresh water connection. So this is gonna be, if you're so to speak dry camping or if you're at a site and they don't actually have water hookup, you're gonna fill up your fresh water tank. And what this does, it's an onboard tank and then your 12 volt pump will pump the water out of the tank to your faucets. So the first thing you wanna do is you're gonna grab your drain cap, which is the cap for this. And you go right down here you're gonna thread that on. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna cap off the drain because obviously most of the time when you're pulling, you wanna drain that out before you take off. 
and then you're gonna grab your hose, you're gonna unscrew that cap, and all you're gonna do is you're just gonna take your water hose and you're just gonna set it right in here. Once that, and then you turn the water on, once that water starts squirting out, that's fine, and you shut the water off, you know that it's full. Next thing I'm gonna go over with you is the one right below it. This one is your city water connection, okay? So this one is gonna be if you have water hookup at the site, you're just gonna run and it's already pressurized so you won't have to use your pump. I always recommend using a water pressure regulator, which is this little guy right here. This just threads on right to the camper. And then what that's gonna do is it's gonna reduce the PSI down to about 45 or less, just in case you're camping where the water pressure is quite a bit higher. You're not gonna take the risk of bursting any lines or fittings. And you're just gonna screw the garden hose on there. And then that bypasses the fresh water tank. So you're not gonna have to use your pump. It's already gonna be pressurized from the water source. And then you'll be able to get, be good to go. So next thing we'll do is we'll go turn on the water for you. All right, so now we're here to the water heater. First thing you're gonna wanna do anytime before you make sure that you light this, you're gonna wanna make sure that that water heater is all the way filled up with water, okay? So after we've hooked up our city water connection, we have the garden hose on, you're gonna wanna come here to this pressure release valve and just pull it just a touch. Once you see the water squirt out, then you know it's full. Then you can go ahead and either run it off of gas or electric. This is a um, dual system. It'll run off of 110 or it'll run off your LP tanks. Kind of touch base on just a few things here. You're gonna have a reset here for the 110 side. And then right down here in the bottom left-hand corner, there's gonna be an on-off switch, which is gonna be almost a double safety feature for the electric side so you don't burn up the element. So once you've made sure that this has got water in it, what you're gonna to wanna to do is go inside and light it up. It's all direct spark ignition, so DSI. Um, so you just literally flip a switch and it'll fire up for you. All right, now that we have the water heater filled up with water, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna come in here to the cooktop and we're gonna light these burners. We'll just use a regular grill lighter. And you're gonna let that burn for about 30 seconds. What that's gonna do is it's gonna purge the gas lines, okay? Make sure everything's flowing properly, that we don't catch any air pockets in the lines. I always recommend running your exhaust fan anytime you're running your cooktop for a large uh, time period just to kind of pull that heat outside. Once we've got a purge, we've got a good blue flame there, we can go ahead and shut that off, and then we can go ahead and light the water heater on gas. All right, now that the gas lines are purged, the water heater is filled, what you're gonna do is you're gonna come over here to the control panel, you're gonna flip the switch that says water heater, okay? And then it's gonna automatically light for you. So DSI again, direct spark ignition, it takes care of the rest. Now there is a little fault switch here, it has a little red light. So if you see that light on anytime while you're camping, something happened and the water heater went out, okay? So it'll try to light three times for you. And then if it doesn't, that'll light up. That notifies you that the water heater did go out and you'll need to flip the switch off, wait about 10 seconds, then turn it back on. There's also a lot of other buttons here, which we'll cover later in the video. All right, now if you wanna double check, just to make sure that it is lit, come out here to the water heater and look right down there and you'll see a nice blue flame. All right, so coming back here to the back side of the unit, um, one last thing on here on this side, we'll kind of go over the sewer connections, the black tank flush, and things of that nature. So what we're gonna do is, the first thing we're gonna do is after you've been camping all weekend, you're gonna come down here after you've pulled up to the dump station, you're gonna remove your cap, okay? And then you're gonna come back here and you're gonna grab your sewer hose. A lot of people will store this in their uh, pass-through storage or even sometimes people will store it in the bumper. Um, you're gonna come down here, it has connections on each side, which are the same connections on your um, sewer outlet there. And you just click that on. And then the other end is gonna actually go in the um, dump station hole, okay? And then right down here, and you're gonna see it is labeled, which is very, very nice. Um, there's two pull valves. And again, when they're pushed in, they're closed when you pull them out to open them. The galley, which is gonna be your sinks and your shower or your gray. And then your wastewater is gonna be your black tank, which is gonna be your toilet, okay? So the first thing first, you're gonna pull your gray, or pull your black valve, okay, which is your wastewater. That's gonna go ahead and dump the toilet tank out. Okay, once that rinses through, obviously it's not full right now. Um, we're gonna let that dump through. Depending on how full your tank is will depend on how long it'll take. And then once that runs through, you'll be able to hear it. Always make sure, again, you're using gloves. And this is obviously a fresh new hose today. And then the next thing we're gonna do, while that valve is still 
pulled open, you're gonna take your hose and you're gonna hook it onto the black tank flush, which is right here. And this is labeled again for you. This is gonna screw on here, okay? Once that's screwed all the way on, just threads on there, just like your city water connection. Make sure it's all the way tight, okay? And then you're gonna go turn the water hose on and then you're gonna let this run for about 30 seconds. What that's gonna do is it's gonna spray inside that black tank it's gonna clean off all your sensors to make sure your monitor panel is functioning properly. And again, it's gonna rinse out some of that sewer hose for you as well. So after about 30 seconds, go shut the water hose off. Make sure you shut the water hose off. Then you're gonna come down here, you're gonna close the black valve. So you're gonna push the black valve in, okay? Then you're gonna go ahead and pull the valve on the left, which is your gray. It's the sinks in the shower. Obviously a little more dish water, things like that. Um, that's gonna finish rinsing out your sewer hose, okay? And then once that's drained out, and again, you'll be able to hear it running through the hose, you'll go ahead and shut that valve as well. Then you'll go ahead, remove, which is a counterclockwise turn, remove that, stow that in your bumper or in your pass-through, and then make sure that you put your cap back on. Remove the, the hose from the black tank flush, and then you'll be all set. All right, as we move over here to the door side of the unit, um, underneath of the main awning, you're gonna have a few features here. Um, the first one being an exterior spray port. So your unit's gonna come with this coiled up hose with an exterior spray port, just like a garden hose. This is actually a quick connect as well. So you're gonna see two little slots right here. It actually just fits right on with the slots on the quick connect. So you'll just push in here and then that just turns clockwise. And then as you have your water hookup, if you need to spray the dog off, what have you, you have that ability. Also, you're gonna have a regular 110 outlet over here, double port. And then over here, you're gonna see, you have a rail right here, which I'll get to in a second. You're gonna fit a tabletop, a griddle, which is already pre-assembled, comes in a box with your coach, and a quick connect gas line, which is really, really nice, so you don't have exterior bottles to hook up. This runs right off of the propane bottle on the front of the coach, okay? So, come over here, we're gonna grab this griddle, which sits on this exterior stand. Just fits right on this rail here. Okay. And the tabletop, and you can see the groove fits right on. Sets right down. So you have your, if you wanna put a plate there with your burgers, what have you, you're gonna have all that set up for you. Runs right off the propane line. Very, very easy to use. And then one last thing before we head inside, this unit will have a QR code. So you can scan that with your phone. It has owner's manuals, tips and tricks. Very, very helpful. We'll go check out the inside. All right, so just inside the door here, you're gonna see you have a little control panel. Um, and everything is very well labeled for you. So the awning, it's a power awning. Now that will run off just your battery as well. So even if you're not plugged into Shoreline, you'll still be able to run in and out the awning. So you're gonna hit an extend and retract button. And it's just, you push it as far as you want it to go. Okay, so if it's super windy outside, you're not gonna wanna have it fully extended, bring it more inside. And then you're gonna have an LED light strip, which is underneath of the awning full length. And you're gonna have an exterior porch light and then you have one set of interior lights. So as soon as you come inside the coach, you can go ahead and flip on this. And then another feature is every light will have its own button as well. So you can run the lights individually or you can run them as a bank. All right, so right here in front of the switches, you're gonna see in the front of the unit, you're gonna have the Murphy bed set up with a jackknife sofa here in front. Um, very cool how this works, very easy to use as well. Um, also here, you're gonna have a receptacle on both sides of the bed. Also, you're gonna have USB hookups on both sides. And then you're gonna have some, the switch for your accent lighting here. So you can see that. As far as the Murphy bed, all you're gonna do is lift up on the bottom of the sofa, lay that down flat. And you're gonna come up here, pull this pin, and it will lower down this platform. And you're gonna have your bed there. And you're gonna have an LED light on both sides. Switch right in the middle, just push in, pops the switch. So his and her reading lights. Also, you're gonna have storage spots for CPAP machines, what have you. 
And then right up here, you're also gonna have a switch for the inverter, because this coach will have a solar panel on top, which will trickle charge the battery, um, let you use your 12 volt refrigerator as well. And there's a switch right there for that. We'll come around here and I'll show you this side. All right, so here at the cooktop, um, you're gonna first lift this up, which is a very nice feature because it's gonna give you added storage space here. So lift that up, and all you're gonna do is turn the knob to where it says light. Take your lighter, light that up, same way on the other burner. And again, you're good to go so you can boil some water, what have you. Now, anytime you're running your stove, I always recommend having the vent fan on, sucks that hot air out of the coach for you. Shut it off, just turn the knob to off, and you're good to go. You can lower this back down, and then you're all set. Now over here at the refrigerator, all you're gonna do, there's a little power button here, the left button. Just hold that down, powers up. You'll see the blue lights come on, and then you'll be all set to go there. Everything turns on automatically, you're all set. All right, so to adjust the temperatures on your freezer and refrigerator, and again, the freezer's on top, refrigerator's on the bottom, so to adjust the freezer, up and down here, plus and minus. Refrigerator, just click that button, plus or minus. Now it does have this moon button here, which is if you're gonna be at night and you're not gonna be opening and closing the refrigerators often, it's more of a power saver mode. Just click that button, hold it down, and you're gonna see it use less voltage. All right, so directly across, across from the refrigerator, you're gonna see you have a thermostat here. Now this is gonna work just like your one at home. The bottom button here, the rectangular button, is gonna be the mode button. So when it says off, obviously all systems are off. If you hit it twice, it's gonna say fan, which is gonna bring outside air inside the coach. Hit mode again, high or low. And then you're gonna have cool, which is gonna be your air conditioner. Just go plus or minus on the temperature, that'll automatically kick on for you. High or low, speeds. Auto, which is gonna run off of the actual thermostat. And if you go to heat, you set the temperature inside the coach. The furnace automatically kicks on inside the coach. No, you don't have to light a pilot or anything like that. You heard it just kick on there. And if you go back to off, it'll shut off. Now, one thing you will hear is if you have the furnace on and you go to shut it off, you're still gonna hear the fan run for about 20 seconds because it actually cools down the fan motor um, and then it'll automatically shut off for you. We'll come up here and we'll check out the rest of the monitor panel. All right, so directly above the thermostat here, we're gonna have the monitor and control panel. All right, so right here, the first thing we're gonna go over is the monitor panel. These are all buttons. You push and hold that button. So for instance, this one says battery, push and hold. And over here, you're gonna see that the battery is fully charged. Now your battery is gonna trickle charge anytime you're plugged into shoreline. And with your solar panel, it's gonna trickle charge the battery. Fresh water is gonna be your fresh water tank. Black is your toilet, and then gray is your sinks and your shower. So this will kind of let you know that as those are filling up, if you need to dump your wastewater, what have you. Now, a lot of times you will notice that your black is always reading full and you know you just emptied it. So a lot of times there's a piece of toilet paper that's stuck on one of the sensors in the tank. So you can run your black tank flush again for a little bit longer to try to rinse that off of there. So that'll cover the monitor panel. This button here is gonna be for your water pump, which is labeled for you. So anytime you're running off of your fresh water tank, you'll use this 12 volt pump, which is an on-demand pump. So once it needs water pressure, the pump will kick on. You shut the water faucet off, the pump kicks off. So you don't have to flip the switch on and off as you need it. It's an on-demand pump. Now anytime you're hooked to city water, it's gonna be bypassing the fresh water tank, so you won't have to use your water pump. This is for the water heater on gas, and then the electric switch is down on the bottom left-hand corner of the water heater, which we showed earlier. Up here, you're gonna have some heated holding tanks, so if you're camping in cold reclinements, you wanna, you're using your fresh water, you can turn that on. It's gonna keep that from freezing up, same way with your black and gray. All right, that wraps up our setup video today. Make sure if you have any further questions, visit our website at forestriverinc.com or any other social media sites.